The costumes uh, is my base. This is where I start doing my art from. In the beginning, I, the first gig I ever did when I was very, very young was costuming and, you know, fashion. The first word I said when I was a little kid was beautiful. That's my first word, not mom or dad or something. I said beautiful. And so my mom told me about flowers. So I was always connected to that. This is going to New York right now with me. Actually, it has vagina on the face. It's like really directly right there. <laughs> Living in New York, it feels like you're part of this big sandwich that everything is compressed together. So just one of the layers. And over here, you're not a sandwich. You're just like, you know, floating in the skies. I worked um, a lot in Buenos Aires, in New York, in Tulis, these three places. But I had uh, performances all over the world in many places. Everything changes here very fast. Like people have that flexibility of um, of, you know, painfully, but definitely bring, getting some kind of new information and growing with it. For me, what I'm trying to do is um, um, take something old and make something new out of it. That's, that's what I try to do. And that's, that's my Georgian identity. <laughs> My name is Uta Bekaya, I'm a multimedia artist, and this is an interview for Sakat Fellow Insight. So I started at a very, very young age. Um, uh, I think I was 15 or 16 years old, very, very young. Uh, we had this um, uh, uh, festival in Tbilisi called Avant Garde Fashion Assembly. Uh, which was in 93, 94, don't remember exact dates, but it was a long time ago. And uh, so my friend was doing it. And because I was, uh, you know, I was always painting and I, I was going to art school, he offered me to do a show there because he said, you're an artist, one should try to do a, a show. And, and so, I, so I did my first costume performance there. It was uh, really crazy, very colorful. At that time, I liked... Uh, it was just very new to listen to a techno and to listen to uh, uh, rave music, uh, hardcore music. I loved it. I loved all the colorful stuff. And I was, uh, you know, trying to find a way to, you know, highlight my queerness, so to say. So I did my first show where I painted people in different colors. They were like, you know, red and yellow and green and blue uh, with uh, watercolor paints because I didn't know what else to use. The first word I said when I was a little kid was beautiful. That's my first word, not mom or dad or something. I said beautiful. And so my mom told me about flowers. So I was always connected to that beauty. And, uh, the, and I started to paint well, at a very young age. And then I, I went to uh, um, the art school. My mom took me to the art school for children. So that, that's what I started. But the first like, you know, actual uh, showing of what I do was that, was that performance. Uh, at the festival, yeah, uh, and then uh, from then uh, I started to do those shows over and over again. And then I, in New York, I, w I worked in a theater for many years as a as a costumer uh, and as a set designer. It was '98, and I I think uh, I think it was 20 or 21 years old. And then it took me one year to, uh, to, to understand where I was. And then afterwards, I started to work in the theater. Uh, and that was, that's when I was 22, 20, 22 or 23, something like that. I started to work in a theater. And that was my um, a job and a provider, uh, do uh, costumes and, and a set design. And I worked in a lot of different off-Broadway plays, so many of them, a lot of it. And a little bit film also, but mostly theater. So I left Georgia when I was very young, when well, I was 19 or something, and I spent 20 years in the States, right? So it was, uh, I had myself an identity crisis because I didn't know I was not from there, I was not from here either. So in the beginning, I started just to try to reconnect with, uh, with my motherland, so to say. So I started to dig out all the, um, all the stuff that is inspiring for me, which is... Uh, like spells, for example, from Angrelia, which is uh, where my family comes from, or uh, mythology, and everything that is 
escapist, so to say, because everything I do is a little bit escapist. I always try to create some sort of magical world. I, I like everything. <laughs> it, I, I like my, I actually love my costumes. Oh, this, this is my, one of my favorite things, and it's more recent. Oh, uh, this is very beautiful for me. I love those. This is a bird and an uh, orchid flower. That's, that was used in my show as a performance and also as a, as a physical installation. Um, these two things are more on a newer side. I'm working on the costumes right now that will come in in a few days. So I can show you later if you guys want. Um, oh, there you go. This is representing real femininity for me. <laughs> this is going to New York right now with me. Actually, it has vagina on the face. It's like really directly right there. <laughs> uh, what else? I know there is so much stuff. Um, no, it's, it's hard to connect this so directly, honestly. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but uh, if you're interested with the connection with George, I actually did these costumes for, uh, I'll show you right now. This is uh, uh, from uh, um, um, Georgia was uh, chosen as a um, Tbilisi was chosen as a uh, capital of uh, UNESCO's capital of the book. So they asked me to do performance to celebrate that, and we did little pieces from uh, different Georgian writers. Uh, and so this was from Shotaru Stavelli. So the, uh, I don't know. There's there's a lot of it there. For example, this costume that is gonna be hard for me to show is. Uh, what, snake eater, I guess? Uh, Rajab Shavala, which is like one of the most amazing things that ever came out of Georgia, is, uh, is a writer. And then he has this book about this uh, man who's gonna eat a forbidden snake, or, uh, and then he's gonna start hearing uh, nature. He can, he will start to understand what the birds are saying, what trees are saying, and it's very beautiful. So this, this is that, I mean, this was a costume that is, uh, that has like trees growing out of it everywhere, for example. This is very heavy. So this is, uh, this was, this I made in, uh, I had a residency at, uh, it's called Mad Museum. There is this place in New York that's a museum of uh, uh, design. Uh, and so they do residencies, so I got the residency there, so I made it there. And this is, this was, this is all the leftovers from other projects. I had like a lot of leftovers, so I just built this costume from the leftovers and uh, the basic idea is that it's like a ritualistic costume that could be used for in literally everything. But it's really very heavy. <laughs> it has like so much. It has like ears and ears of leftovers on it, like all over the petals. Something very shiny, there you go. This is as shiny as it gets. <laughs> Can you describe? Well, this was just to, uh, this just was made for, um, um, a little show, it didn't really have any concept, it's just to have a, uh, uh, like celebrate the glam rock and 70s and, uh, you know, acid trip and all that, all that stuff from, literally it's just 70s, so this, this, that was it. It was just like, um, for the concert, someone just asked us to do the, the costumes for a concert and, um, and dancers wore it and it, it, they looked like they're moving um, <coughs> mirror balls, so that was cool. More costumes. What else I show you? Uh, this is from the one of the old, oldest costumes that I have that I made a long, long time ago. It has all these hearts on it. This I made really long time ago, probably what, like 15 years ago or so. I still have it. I don't have anything else left from the time, just this one. The costumes are, is my base. This is where I start doing my art from. In the beginning, I, the first gig I ever did when I was very, very young was costuming and you know, fashion, as I thought at the time, but it was not really fashion, it was like the weird ritualistic uh, costume performance. So it's, uh, performance is always kind of, it's very, perform it's very theatrical. So it's kind of everything I do, even if it's static and it doesn't move, it's still very performative, so to say, right? Um, and, you know, I use costumes to, you know, originally when I, I perform myself too, with, with my costumes, I would make the, like, you know, masks or hats or just some kind of very heavy costume that was very hard to wear and hard to breathe and hard to see. So then you're like kind of out of your mind for while you're performing a little bit. You're not like fully presented. You're 
definitely cannot think about anything else than just being there at that time. So it was like ritualistic somewhat, it's like neo-ritualism. It's, it's, that's, that's, that, that was the main goal, to put it in a words and write it down. But it's all about sensations and what you feel at the time. I think everything I do is, comes from my upbringing of, of my mom, especially, because she was a very strong woman who took care of us when the, you know, things were really hard. And, and also she was very you know, kind and uh, soft, but also like very strong. It was a good, strange mix of things together. Uh, so uh, I feed off of it. This is like very, very uh, a strong influence on me, the femininity in general. Like uh, every single performance I do, it's like a next chapter for the one that I did before. So they're all somehow connected to each other. They definitely have some kind of one visual underline. They, they, you can say that it's connected to each other, but also uh, uh, with idea and with concept, they're somehow connected to each other. For me, what I'm trying to do is um, um, take something old and make something new out of it. That's, that's what I try to do. And that's, that's my Georgian identity. <laughs> I worked a lot in Buenos Aires, in New York, in Tbilisi, these three places. But I had uh, performances all over the world in many places. So I don't know which one, if any of them are really uh, more uh, important than the others. Um, and career also could be so tricky for me. Like for me, what I, I used to be a very career-driven person before. as an, you know, as a given success of what society tells you what success is. As I get older, it changes to, like success becomes something else. As, as it, before it was something different for me. Right now, for me, it, success means uh, self-reflecting. That's what success is. When I am able to uh, express, um, visually express of what I want to express, that's success for me. Do you know what I mean? So it, 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 shift, it changes all the time, you know, the of achievement, the sen sense of achievement, the sense of, oh, I okay, did something that uh, was important. It, it shifts, it, it always changes. And then the funny thing is that as, as, as when I was younger and I really wanted to have a, you know, like conventional success, and it was very hard for him to get it. And as I grow older and I kind of don't really care about it, it became uh, much easier and it just like around. You know what I mean? I don't know why that happens, but it's just manifestation in the skies or something. But yeah, that, that's how it goes. I like everything, not just the, this, but like the way I approach life, where I approach myself, the everyday life. And it became much easier, so to say, because it's not easy before then. You know, it was a constant war. Uh, you know, with, from inside, from outside, it was not easy. I had this, you know, I, I grew, I was, I was, I grew up in Georgia, right? So the Georgia is like, um, especially '90s when I was a teenager, it was a very hard place to be. It was very, um, you know, system crushed here. I was a queer kid. It was everything was like against me, so to say, right? It's like physically dangerous to be here, and I couldn't, I didn't fit in. You know, it just like very hard for me to. Well, I had my tribe, and it was. Great, and when I l remember my life now, it was actually very rebellious, and uh, I had the great people around me who I had support from. Um, but it was just hard to live here. It was physically dangerous, and it was just hard to live here. It was very um, dark time, so I just tried to escape from that, and also for, uh, for to study, which I never did. <laughs> it just I went, I went to, I was going to study in London in. Um, uh, St. Martin's, and I applied there and I got in, which was like very hard to get in. And then I never went. <laughs> it just got stuck in New York City somehow. So I rubbled, so that rubble followed me for a long time. It was this, I was trying to have a war with everything for a long time before I settled down a little bit. So yeah, I think it's really, for me, it's just age. Age and uh, uh, age brought a sense of calm that translated to everything, including uh, quality of work. Everything got, it became more clear, definitely. Like everything has become more understandable, more clear of what, what, what is it that I'm, I'm doing, honestly. That, that, that for sure, it, and just it's, it made uh, life easier and made my path easier. Uh, that's for sure. It's not, nothing is finished ever, I think, before the day I die. But, uh, but 
it just made everything definitely more clear because I had, like, I felt like there were some parts of my soul that were ripped out of me, and I wanted to make it more, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call this, complete. The crazy story that happened to me, which is like really weird, so the, the, I came here in August of 2008, I was 6th of August, when, and the war started that day. So literally, first day I came here, we had a war. So it was very heavy experience, actually. But then, uh, of course, it changed. I mean, it's, it's like a whole different world. Again, it's a, uh, it feels like you went through some kind of painful process, as now it's starting to... Um, it's like, you know, when, when we're born, probably you're, when you come out, you feel so much pain before you start to leave. I think this is the, that, that's the feeling that I had about this place. And I think right now it's just starting to exist. And, uh, and it's, it's, it has changed a lot. It, def, it has a perspective. I mean, it's, it has a, it's not dark anymore. Well, it changed economically for sure. It became more stable. Uh, that's the, that's 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 very important thing, and became very bohemian. <laughs> I mean, always it was always bohemian kind of, but like now I think it's in peak of that, and uh, um, it became very rebel, which I'm so proud of because. Uh, Georgians, uh, they, they're like a rebelous people. They always speak their mind, which is uh, something to be proud of. So um, it's forming, it's still forming. I don't know, it's, it's changing. It's changing a lot every single day. Uh, for me, it's changing for better. Yeah, it's changing to, towards uh, more developed, more uh, um, stronger country with a stronger point of view. It's a country of uh, probably one of the oldest countries in the world, uh, within, with language especially, and also new country. So it's just, it has this, um, um, uh, it has this dual, dual thing with a, to it, which is very interesting and very specific to it. Because again, it's like a completely new country with a huge baggage from the past. So that makes it very special. And, and also the, even nature is like that. You know, there has, it has so many different, uh, very different things uh, in a very short distances from each other. Starting with sea, finish with the uh, snowy mountains at the same time. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a country of duality for me. And uh, that is probably what makes it very different from everything else. Or it feels like it's in a, empty canvas that you can build anything you want at. This is, this is the perspective I'm talking about. It's, it's like very open to, especially artistic, I'm not, and probably other, other stuff too, especially artistic uh, practices. It's very, very open to it. It's, it's like literally feeling, feels for me like we are right in the history, which is a really amazing feeling. It, you know, like in, living in New York, it feels like you're part of this big sandwich that everything is compressed together. So just one of the layers. And over here, you're not a sandwich. You're just like, you know, floating in the sky. So this is the, the biggest difference for me. That's what it is, really. Because, uh, again, it's empty canvas. It gives you so much freedom. It doesn't have formed uh, idea of what art should be like, for example, as it has in a developed um, uh, developed uh, art business countries or cities because uh, New York is, uh, or not just New York, but so many places, the uh, art is very much connected to business like everywhere else and it has unwritten rules of some sort that, um, that you have to fit into in order to succeed in what you're doing. And over here it doesn't, so that's, that's, that's like the most, most amazing thing. It gives you a creative freedom to self-express and everything is valid. It doesn't have a bad or good. So this, this is the most important part, part of it for me. It's, it's very hard to live in a world. Art world is so you know, complicated and then confusing. So it's, it's, it's nice to be in a place where mm, there are no rules. <laughs> That's pretty much it. We're searching for something. It's, it's, it, it's alive and it's vibrant and it's not spoiled by capitalism, <laughs> so to say. It's, it's it, you know what I mean? It's, it's still underground and it's still uh, breathing, even though there's a lot of influences, of course, from everywhere. And also the most important thing for me in Georgia is that it's in a 
um, uh, like part of it is Asia and part of it is Europe. And that's, the, that's, that's very beautiful because it has this poetic side of, uh, of how art is pursued in, in, uh, in Asia and East. And it has the, also uh, a logistic part that is from a Western way of pursuing what art is. So it's very unique that way. So this is also something that influences me and I think every, everyone and everything here. And um, we should celebrate that more and understood what we have because it's a, it's, it's something that it, it's, it doesn't, nothing else, it just, this place has it. <laughs> and it's, it's very specific to it. Um, that uh, understanding of what art is, of uh, how, how you see art. First of all, Tbilisi has it's an easier place to work because um, just the downright to uh, production is easier to do here than in New York. Everything is very accessible and you can also find things that you would not think that exist. And, and you know, like when you go to Eliava and places like that, you can find so much uh, stuff that you wouldn't think you need. <laughs> so then, you know, that's, that's really amazing. Also, um, uh, assistance, I can find people here who are pros and help me out with the building stuff that I won't be able to do just by myself. I don't know, it's just cheaper also. I don't know, there's a lot of different things. And also, it's definitely more inspiring. You know, I'm from here, so it, this place gives me a new inspiration. But uh, also, it's just got independent 30 years ago, and we're just starting to build up our identity from the scratch. So it kind of feels like you're taking part of it when you work here, which is great. New York is harsh because it's very driven by people's ambitions, so to say. And here it's a little bit more poetic, you know, the approach to life is a little bit more poetic. When I was 20, it was better to be in a, in a hectic place when everyone had a big ambitions. When I'm 40, it's better to be in a poetic place when it's a little bit more soft. I love that. That's, that's really, at this part of my, uh, you know, point of my life, I, I love to have uh, the softness around me. What this place needs is more individuals and more uh, people who can stand on their own. That's definitely what it needs. To form the identity, it's very important to have this, to, to form an uh, identity of the country because uh, we're in a process right now. This is like shaping right now. So that's why it needs a strong point of view to be able to find and form it, base it off of whatever we have historically, but just find this new identity, which is very important to have in today's world. Uh, Georgian society is also not completely fully formed yet. Well, I have my bubble and, and I'm very happy in, in, in the bubble that I have around me of, of people who I, um, who I um, conversate with and hang out with. But uh, um, society can be very cruel here and, uh, you know, especially towards things that they don't know. Uh, they could be very, um, very cruel sometimes. So I try not to uh, uh, get involved as, as much as possible, though it's, it's hanging out in the air sometimes. But again, things are shifting. The one thing about, a good thing about Georgia is also that they're not, the Georgians and me, myself too, we're not really hung on to any ideas. Everything changes here very fast. Like people, have that flexibility of, uh, of, you know, you know, painfully, but definitely bring getting some kind of new information and growing with it. So that's I'm hoping that um, that will change too. Society in general, societal rules are not just in Georgia but anywhere are very uh, traumatic, <laughs> I think, um, and they influence you, and it, it's it's hard to um, not have a painful experience with, a, with a, the structure that society builds and brings it on you. There's always like hanging in the back of my head that I have to go back and uh, have full experience because, you know, I love this place. I have like an unconditional love uh, connection to, to the earth and to people and to everything here. You know what I mean? Like when I'm here, I'm not afraid to die. This is like a very specific uh, feeling that that uh, that I have, which is like uh, strange and unexplainable, honestly. So I always felt like I wanted to um, finish something, and and 
you know, finish the cycle at least, you know, to, to fully experience it.